early dance orchestral stuff um, from Kim Bruce era to Uhuru and then Wulome. You no, know, because of my granddad, uh, I live with my grandparents at a very young age. So I was listening to all, I was Nat King Cole, um, uh, a bit of very traditional high life stuff, the Jaco Nimo, you know, and Boga High Life, a lot of stuff like that. Yeah, um, that's what influenced me the most uh, growing up. And I'll say um, I started with music at quite a very early age. I started studying piano at the age of eight. And then I stopped uh, because my music teacher was annoying. Yeah, so that, that, was, that was one thing. But I, I, as soon as I stopped, I moved into drums. Nobody taught me how to play the drums. Um, so I had to study on my own, um, learning how to do the separation and all that. And then I taught my kid brother and I stopped and went into singing. Uh, so all this while, I think I, I got admission to Achimoto school and I wanted to do music. That's what I wanted to do. So uh, I, had, I had a bit of backlash from my relatives. Like, what are you going to study music for? A musical, you only, the only thing you do is finish, you teach. And I was like, nah, that's what I want to do, you know. But thanks to my granddad who's passed away, um, he really give, gave me the support. So I got to Hachimoto school, learn music, blah, 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 blah. Fast forward, um, I became the choir director for the whole Agri Chapel Choir uh, during my time. And then out of school, I did a little bit of commercial art, which people don't know about. Um, so I was doing billboards and stuff. Yeah, and my granddad was, is an artist. He was an artist, very dope. So yeah, I got my influence from there too. So basically, um, studied music in the uni, diploma in general music, did my service there, taught for a year the classical guitar and music theory, and then went back for my degree, music and theater arts. So I was basically influenced by sound design. And that's when I started music production. Yes, um, thanks to a guy called Juju in the University of Ghana. Yeah, he's, he's really good. Um, he taught me that. So I was practically doing sound effects and um, sound design for theater at stage plays. Uh, so that's what I really went into, even though I had my classical guitar part and I was also in the pop band in the uni. So yeah, that's basically why I'm into music production now. Um, because I understand the frequencies every instrument gives. So I love to hear soundscapes, basically, yeah. Okay, so I think Richie's last album, a couple of stuff on it that I played guitars on, um, that I liked. And then also, let's see, moving, 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 stuff that people already know. Um, you and me. Joey B, uh, produced by Kuvi. Yeah, those guitars were one of challenging guitars that I needed to work on. Like, I love that song, you know? So I took my time to like place those guitars here and there. Uh, and I'll say, yeah, You and Me. And You and Me is a very good song. Um, I'll say it bridges a gap in high life and what we have now. Yeah, so I think that's one of my favorites. And then one song that I had Fun on was tomorrow. Dark vibes. Yeah, I really had fun on that song. I love that song because I'm a guy and you don't have a lot of people doing ga songs. You know, the only people you hear is Amanziba. Like new school guys, you don't hear anyone doing that. Maybe Sina is trying to do that, but like for a guy, Dark on, yeah, is bringing up something nice. And I had fun on that song. Tomorrow, Charlie. I just, I just had fun on I love that song, you know. Um, okay, something about me. I, I always want to stick to one thing. I like fusion because I love a lot of genres. So sometimes I'm listening to like Hindi songs or uh, I'm listening to like EDM stuff. I'm listening to like high life. I'm listening to like folk music, pop rock, you know, or hard rock. Like, the influences are many, but um, I like to infuse each one of them. 
in my production. So you could hear like a serious African instrumentation. Then you hear some trap stuff somewhere or you hear some rock stuff somewhere. You know, I like to, so everybody can enjoy it. Because I'll say that maybe some people do not like to listen to jazz. You know, they don't like it. They want to hear something heavy, you know, or have some heavy bass in there, you know. So I always try to infuse something small from here and there. So like you get stuff like, whoa, you know, that kind of thing. Actually, music can be boring if you don't treat it right, you know. And it might be a good song, but it might not fly, you know. And I feel we are in a generation whereby commercial stuff is very important. Um, you don't have... A lot of people enjoying songs that are very meditative, you know, that you can analyze the songs or the form and analysis of the whole song. People want something that they can dance to and all that. You know, we need to appreciate every kind of music. But I personally like to infuse a lot of genres in my, in my production. Yeah. If it's Ida, um, I think I can use Broken Voice as a reference. Um, my band's first single. You could hear the whole Arabian or Eastern feel in some parts of the music. You can hear pure pop guitar in some parts of the music. And then it moves into an African, like South African feel with the drums coming in, you know, so something like that, you know. You can hear the guitar. You hear the Eastern feel, you know, and it goes, it gets into the latter part of the chorus where you hear the drums having that South African kind of, you know. So that's how I love to produce. It could be EDM, but Charlie, you hear stuff coming from here, you know, different influences, you know, yeah. I have th three processes. Um, first one is my favorite instrument, the guitar. Um, I, I learned a bit of flamenco um, from some of the Spanish greats. Um, um Kiko Veneno and stuff. Uh like on one on one. And I like the percussive stuff. So I love drums. Drums drums melody will be the first thing. Drums melody. Because I feel let's strip everything down if you have a band. Like what what holds the band? Your drums and then that melody. I can have just a melody and a drum and I'll hit the show, like make the show great because people can hear me sing and have a drum given, whatever. Even in this generation where you have drum parts that can play melodic stuff, you know? So I normally start with either drums or very nice melody, okay? Um, melody, stroke, chords. Yeah, so that's how I start my productions. So it's either I'm playing chords on the piano with a melody or a guitar and like I have a timeline to it, which might be a kick or maybe a hi-hat somewhere. You know, that's how I start my productions. Yeah. So, yeah, basically. So I'll say drums and melody. Yeah. One of the productions for my artist, Ayoko, I think that was in three minutes. Yeah, like the thing was ringing in my head already. So I just opened the laptop, plugged in <laughs> my MIDI keyboard and just started because everything was, I could practically see everything. It's like I had synesthesia, like you are feeling the thing, like you can see like colors of everything. Like, you know, this, well, you're adding this, you're adding this, you're adding that. Obviously, I realized that I'd already created and it was just a, an eight track, you know, kind of song. You know, and I just like that. And I just sent it to her. And funny enough, she sent me like a very short melody in 10 minutes. And that's, I, I thought that was dope. Like, you know, and that's when we, we developed the song. Charlie, this one is an easy go cancel. Mixing. Yeah, mixing is like the grandpapa. If, if you don't understand your frequencies, it's very difficult to mix because everything you have, like, just imagine you have a whole orchestra. Every single instrument must cut through the mix. You need to hear every, even if a pin drops, you need to hear that pin drop. And that is the difficult part because you have, like, 
very low ends, very high end, very mid end. Like everything is there. You need to make everything sound proper. The voice needs to be on top of the instrumentation, but still you feel it as one. And that's a very difficult part. I know it takes like very great like mixing engineers like months to even finish a song. Unless maybe they have a certain kind of process they use. But I know every song has a different way of sounding. I wonder if I'll ever mix a rock song. I swear, because you have like three distortion guitars, one playing drive, drama, bassist, like everything is, but you can hear everything. I, I, I don't want to even touch like a rock song, <laughs> to be honest, but mixing is like the most difficult part. Production is fun. It can go wrong, it can go right. If you have a good mixing engineer, he can turn the life of that song or production around, you know, and see, I'm telling you, mixing is it's crazy. Mastering is not that difficult like that. You just need to know where to place your low ends and stuff, your high ends. Everything should sound balanced, but everything starts from the mix. But if your recording is not good, your mix, no matter what, will be bad. Because everything starts from the recording. Because it's like, I'm trying to prepare food and I put a lot of salt in it at the first end. What do you expect? Do you get it? No, so I think people should, I've, I realized a lot of people don't take recording seriously here. Um, where you place your mics and all those stuff is very important. Because if it's not good, you have to go back and do it again. You know, so recording process is very important. It makes it makes easy, you know. So it can be good, it can be bad, but mixing is the craziest part of Charlie, sound production, unlike you. All right, so right now, the door that I use is Logic Pro X. Um, I just updated to the 3.2. Um, that's my first thing, on my MacBook. And then I, I have, um, a Steinberg UL22 MK2, um, which I love because it has a deep pre kind of switch on it and it's really sweet, really, really sweet. It's, it won't be the high end kind of thing, but yeah, I love it. And then I have a focus right, um, audio interface also, which is like my move, you know, moving around with it most of the times. And then I have. A mic from Steinberg. I also have a mic from Audio Technica, um, the AT2020. And then I have another mic from Focusrite, which came with my Focusrite um, audio interface. Uh, then I have a Yamaha piano. It's a, it's a, it's a Pajaro. Um, it also works as a MIDI keyboard. Yeah. These are the stuff that I work with most of the times. And then my guitar. Yeah. And then my, I have two zoom pedals, the G5 and then the A1. Yeah, basically. So these are my go-to stuff. Charlie, a million dollars have no catch. A million dollars have no catch. Like, see, I wish the camera could zoom onto something here, yeah? Um, there is this Avalon, Charlie, crazy, crazy for low stuff, man. This thing, recording bass is, I tell you. And uh, this is an API lunchbox, but it has news. You know, all this place is empty. Like, all this place should be filled with news. And one of these things is like, Charlie, crazy, oh, Sikabe Bre. This is an Apogee Symphony. Like, all these things you need. Like, all these things can last you for just 10 years. Because they are upgrades every single time. So having a dream studio is like, you need to really have like money always ready. <laughs> the dream, dream studio, dear Charlie. I, 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 I don't know what to say, but like crazy stuff. Um, my favorite monitors will be a focal. Focals are the best. They give you what you need to hear. Like, forget the room. What you are hearing is what you are going to hear. You get it. So it's really, really important. Like me, I wish I had a whole rack of stuff. I, I, 
I just go to business in this place and I'm like, Charlie, why? Why? Like, you should see the guy's racks. Like, a whole HD, Pro Tools, like, crazy. You know, those stuff. Like, I want, I want to work in a place where every single thing is available to me. Like, everything should have a single sound that is unique. You know, that kind of thing. That's, like, my dream studio. Like, have, like, 30-something guitars. Each, every, every guitar should have a very unique tone. That's, no, that's how crazy I am when it comes to sound. I love soundscapes. Like, I wish I could even play the sitar, you know. One day, I just want to go in there and just lend that instrument because it's beautiful. Like, I, every single thing. Me, I stand in the middle, though. <laughs> I stand in the middle because I feel VSTs um, are like mobile stuff for us. Um, if I can buy the instrument, you are giving it to me in a software, you know. You can't always carry stuff around. Just imagine carrying a keyboard on a plane. You need to go and play a gig somewhere. And you need to carry like a whole Hammond organ, really. But when you have the VST, it makes work easy for you. You get it. So for me, I stand in the middle. I would love to have the hardware in my studio, produce in my studio, and put my work out. But if I need to travel, there's no way I can carry that. So VSTs are like lifesavers. So me, I'll go for both. But in terms of mobility, I'll go for VSTs. Definitely. Um, yeah, the one uh, we recorded with Senna Dagadu for the band's album. And also my favorite, very Yakuto. Yeah, the writing process was beautiful. You know, we just we just crashed in the studio like the whole day. We wrote the song, recorded it the next day with the band. Like we didn't even rehearse. That's that's how dope it was. Like I just recorded the rough stuff. You know, I just put out the rough stuff. No drums, nothing. It was just guitar and voice. I wrote the song. Guitar and voice, I just sent it to everybody on the page in the band. They listened to it. We came the next day, we ran through once and we recorded. And it was beautiful, you know. And everybody was happy, Charlie. So that I would say Yakutu's session was awesome. Yeah, after that, Senna Dakadu's session. We, record, we, we wrote the song that night, arranged that night, recorded that night, you know. Yeah. That's kind of work that we put in. First place, you should know the vision you're going for. Why are you even forming a band in the first place? Is it because you just love to see a band perform or you love music or you love, you know, bringing people together to work on music? Which is it? What, what are you looking at in the next five or 10 years with whatever you want to do with the band? Um, I'll say for me, I use myself as a reference. For me, um, I think it's because I grew up in a family that loved music. Um, my brother loves music, uh, just like me. Um, my friends around, all those people that I, I walk with, you know, love music. And I felt like I was listening to stuff that was too digital. And I felt I needed to start start my own um, kind of live band session, you know, where I have people that I trust, people that I know are hardworking when it comes to music. And uh, and then it just popped up. Like we just we just came up with the name, Musical Lunatics. Like you're crazy for music. Um, I'll say forming a band is not easy. To find people. You need to find someone who's committed. If there is no commitment, forget it. You call for a rehearsal session, nobody will come. And also, if if it's, it's a band that's from the scratch, Charlie, you don't have money, you know, because it involves a lot of money. You don't have a recording space. You don't have a rehearsal space. You don't have instruments. You don't have all those things. It's very difficult to put a band together until you guys have 
a solid vision behind you guys. Like you, this is all what everybody's going to do or is gunning for, you know. And um, I always, I always thank God for giving me the people that I have now because we've gone through a lot. Uh, the band started in 2012, June. Uh, it started like, oh, we're just playing around, you know. And then we had our first gig that same year um, for British International School where I used to work. And that's how we were like, okay, I think we are good. We can move on with this. And from then, it has been a stepping stone for us, moving here and there. And I'll say, I have my brother in the band. Um, one of my best friends is our logistics manager. And one of my very best friends was our keyboardist. And he, he had a different vision also. So he had to leave. And then we had another person. He also wanted his own stuff. So he also had to leave. And now we have another keyboardist. And, you know, and one of my roommates, um, Obed, is our second keyboardist. Like, this is a kind of family, you know. So just imagine, if you don't have all these people together who understand what you are going for and are behind you, I'm sorry, Charlie, the band, you know, it's, going, it's just going to go apart. Then, then, a few months, nobody will want to be there because everybody wants to be paid. It's their profession to get it. So if transport, how do you expect the person to come for rehearsals if you're not giving the person something to be able to be there? And that's when you start going to deep into your pockets. You know, sometimes, Charlie, I've, it's gotten to a stage where I even I didn't have five shillings on me. That's, that's how crazy it was. But we still needed to rehearse, you know, because we all had a vision, you know. So it's not very easy coming up with the band, you know, because it's a lot of hard work. I have to be honest. And also even gigs, like Charlie, you know how Ghana is. Somebody will tell you, oh, this is, oh, we'll give you this, we'll give you that. If, if you calculate everything, you realize that Charlie, you're not getting anything out of it. But because of the passion you have for music, you always want to do it, you know. And I thank God, like, he's, he's really strengthened us to get to where we are now. And even for me personally, I've learned a lot you know, human relations and stuff, even though I study theater management, but like, this is the hard, this is the hard stuff, you know, you're on the field, like it's happening to you, so you know that, yeah, this is it, but handling a band is not easy at all, at all, people won't pay you the right money they're supposed to pay you, or they, they don't pay early when you need the money, or Charlie, plenty things, it's crazy. Sometimes you need a keyboard because you don't have it. You have to go and hire the keyboard. Then you are there at the show. Now the person comes. Charlie, me have a keyboard though. Charlie, that's that's kind of thing. Hey, hmm. if we say we talk about stuff that we've gone through, eh, it won't end right now. You know, it's not been easy. Charlie, me, I always say people see you on stage with big artists and things. Charlie, hey, Charlie, they get money or they get money. Forget it. Forget. Forget, I'm not Cindy Kutrim, I swear, you know, and it's, it's, it's bad. Like people see me, they're like, hey, Charlie, they get money. I'm like, yeah, they get money. <laughs> you don't know, you know, that kind of thing. Cause Charlie, you see us on, on TV, you see us, you hear of us, but Charlie, fame doesn't bring money. I swear, it doesn't bring money. Like at a point, yes, it will. You get favors and stuff. You know, but it doesn't really give you what you need. Your hard work is what brings the money. No matter what, the hard work is that people see the talent in you and they always want you on their platform. That is what you're supposed to gun for. You no, know, but if you see me on TV, it doesn't mean that I have money. No, it doesn't work that way. It doesn't work that way. So it's not, it's not easy. I have to be honest. It's not easy at all. We has our time, Charlie. It's not easy. I'll, I'll be very honest. Everyone in the band is given equal respect. Even though they see me as the front line or the front person for them. Um, thank God I don't have rebellious people in the band. 
Um, they always listen. They, they, I think I've, I've experienced a lot of stuff. Um, so they feel like, oh, I know what I'm talking about. And it's not like you don't know what you're talking about. So when you say it, they don't mind you. Do you get it? So everybody sees me like a core of the band, but I also see them as the people that make me who I am. You know, they are like the bond. Like they make everything work. Because without them, there is no musical lunatics. There is no band. There is no me. You know, and they understand that. So um, controlling your band is very essential. If you can't control the instrumentalist in your band, not control as an autocratic control, but like for everybody to know that, hey, we are all listening to one person. You know, there's one captain that's running that ship. It makes things very easy because there are stuff that when we are playing, you hear this person doesn't hear this, but you, you need to be the eye of the band. You know, you need to be ear of the band, you know, and that's one, they've, one thing they've come to realize. So everybody listens and that's what's keeping the band going. And I also listen to them when they give suggestions. So they feel like, oh, he listens. So when he talks, we also listen, you know, but I know some bands, Charlie, the person will tell you, hey, no, no, no. Let me tell you something. All over the world, I've worked with so many musicians from Palestine, Israel, Germany, the US, like Tunisians, like every, every musician has an ego. Every musician. See, if a musician tells you he doesn't have one, he's a liar. Everyone, everybody feels like I'm on my own, like I know what I'm about. You know, don't come and tell me what I'm supposed to do. You know, it's, it's basically humility. If you are a humble musician, you learn a lot because people want to teach you. But if you feel like you know too much, then people want to draw away. And that's one thing. Like, they know. I'm like, Charlie, we are all learning. You know, it's a learning process for everybody. Each and every day we are learning something new. So don't feel like you know. So when we are doing something, let's all come together. We'll disagree on stuff. But let's all agree that this is what we are going for. We get to rehearse house, you see somebody, uh, you know, that kind of thing. And funny enough, majority of us are guys in there. So you can imagine what happens, you know, like someone, but it's in a nice way. Like everybody's insulting somebody in a nice way, but we all fight and later on, okay, we are going for this and we settle it. You get it. So that's how come we control all these things in the band. And we don't talk about everybody like that. Like I'll see somebody, Charlie, when I know him in FA, or you see what this person did, you know, that kind of thing. We don't, we don't encourage that in the band, you know, so everything stays in there and we talk about it and that is it, you know. So you don't hear that, hey, this person is fighting with someone or they come to rehearse or you have like an awkward situation or somebody is chasing the singer in the band or something like, you know, and these things happen. They don't tell you, like, it's crazy. You see some band leaders, Charlie, he timed the, the lane singer, the lady and Charlie, they are having something together. And somebody, they feel that girl, you know, and like it brings, you, you hear the stories, you laugh. But this is the kind of stuff that we keep in the band. We just keep things close, you know, and that's what works for us. First place, I think a lot of musicians down here are ignorant. I have to be, I have to be very blunt about it. You have a beautiful gift. Now, you, you, you put that gift on somebody's song. Because they know you are ignorant, they don't care. Like, the whole process that goes into it, it's not done. Now, you, you are done and the person doesn't credit you and you are complaining. Now, outside Ghana, there's always a contract somewhere that has you to sign that this is the kind of work I'm putting on. You need an agreement. It's like a split sheet. You are working with this artist. This is what you are doing. You are working with that art producer. You guys brought something in, contributed to a production. There should be a split sheet showing that this is what I did. This is the percentage I'm going to get from that song. It's different if I'm doing it for free. If you do it for free, you don't have a say. Don't come out. It's, yes, credit, crediting people is very important. I can sue you for that if you don't credit me. I can practically make them put that song down or take that part of my line out of your song. You get it? 
But I think it all starts from they knowing that we are ignorant of stuff. So they take us for granted, you know? And for me as a producer, anybody who puts something on my song, I need to credit the person that, hey, this, 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 this. But it's all coming out from we instrumentalists not doing the right thing. We need to go through the right process. So the person already knows from the onset that, hey, if I put this song out and I don't credit this person, this is what is going to happen to me. And it also boils down to our system down here. You know, we don't have, the structures are there, but we are not implementing the structures. Uh, somebody will tell you that, oh, we don't have a music industry. It's yes and no. <laughs> we have all the structures for an industry, but we are not using those structures as an industry. So I'll say we have, we don't. You know, and this is where the whole problem comes in. For example, I had an issue with um, um, you and me at a point because I wasn't credited for playing those guitars on the song. And I had to confront Kuvi and ask him before he put it out on social media because I knew he knew the right thing, but the right thing wasn't done. So I had to confront him. And I'm sure a lot of people even know, don't even know that I was the one who even played those guitars on it. You know, and that's the funny part. I'm, 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 not, I'm not there for fame or anything. I'm just doing my work. But, you know, the right thing has to be done. Because if you don't do the right thing, one day you work for somebody outside <laughs> and you don't credit the person. And you see, they are going to pull people on you. Like, all the money that you've made from that record it's going to that person. You know, it's just common sense. Like, you should know that. And this is where the problem comes in. We don't know what goes into all this publishing stuff and, you know, putting somebody's name on a second record. You realize that even Beyonce's latest, you can check every single person that was on that production's name is on the album. You know, because she knows that if she doesn't put the person's name there, I can be sued. So I think as instrumentalists, we need as much as possible to tell producers, look, this thing I'm doing is either I'm doing it for free or I'm doing it for this X amount of money or all I want is my credit. So if you are charging the person for high, you know, you don't have a say. He's paid you for it and that is it. It ends there. Or you're doing it for free. Ends there. Even for free, yes, I think you should credit the person because the person has given you something for free. Show appreciation, basically. You know, and even as an instrumentalist, that credit brings another work for the person because the person hears the work. Oh, this person was the one who did it, you know, and you get another job because of what you did. But if you don't do that, then you are trying to put the instrumentalist in the box. Do you get it? So for me, I feel... Crediting is important, but we as instrumentalists should wise up. We should learn about all these things when it comes to publishing, you know, songs, credits, and all those things. It's very important. We need, we need to create our own format. You should even see all these things are even online. Like we are in the technological world. Go find out, check out. Oh, uh, this is what they do. An agreement, producer agreement, artist producer agreement, all these things. You have them. You can find those formats online. You know, and let's learn. It's not all about playing the instrument. It's, music is a business. To be honest, music is a business. You can go to heaven and come back. It's still a business. You know, so if it's up to you, if you want to do the music because of passion, then that's it. Finish. You know, that's it. So basically, I'll say we need to wise up as instrumentalists. I sing the song. You are the 